हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द पालमर स्पेसेस ऑफ द हैंड नाउ व्हेन यू विल सी द पालमर स्पेसेस मेजॉरिटीली यू हैव द थ्री नेम्स इन योर माइंड वन इज द पल्प स्पेस पल्प स्पेसेस आर प्रेजेंट ऑन द टिप्स ऑफ योर फिंगर्स सेकंड इज योर मिड पालमर स्पेस एंड द थर्ड इज थिन आर स्पेस सो इन टुडेज लेक्चर विल डिस्कस दीज स्पेसेज वन बाई वन सो माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेन यू विल हैव द पाम is it there a space first you have to understand that what is the meaning of the space so in this you can see that this is your thick aponeurosis which is known as palmar aponeurosis so during the dissection once you will remove the skin of your palm you will find this thick band which is triangular in nature and you have to understand that suppose there is nothing present deep to the palmar aponeurosis so in this video clip what i did is that i removed all the structures which should be present into the palm so this is the aponeurosis and you can see that now the there is a space is visible and posteriorly you know that we have these metacarpals and between the metacarpals you have the presence of your interosseous muscles so in this way you can see that there is a space is present in your hand between your palmar aponeurosis and behind the palmar aponeurosis if you will remove all the structures deepest you will find these metacarpals and between the metacarpals you will have the interosseous but it is not the actual scenario when you will talk about the reality you will find that deep to this palmar aponeurosis we have multiple structures what these structures are you have the uh, superficial arch which is formed by the arteries you will have the digital nerves you will have the long flexor tendons which are entering into the palm and these are the long tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis flexor digitorum profundus and between the profundus you will have these lumbricals so my dear students ideally there is no space because the area between the palmar aponeurosis and metacarpal bones is filled by multiple structures which are present in your palm clear so then what is the meaning of the space now see you have to understand that this palmar aponeurosis and the deep fascia of your hand gives the multiple septas and these septas are responsible to form the compartments so before understanding the spaces you have to understand the arrangement of the fascia in the palm so the fascia of the palm is thin it is thin over the thinar and hypothenar eminence but it is thick centrally and you know that this thick centrally area is known as palmar aponeurosis and when it extend into the fingers it is going to form your digital sheath now this you very well know with the this diagram you can also appreciate that this is the area where you can see the center portion of the deep fascia while here in these areas that is on the sides you will find that the fascia is not that thick as in the center and these are your thinar area and hypothenar area and this is also extending into the fingers where you can see that it is forming the fibrous flexor sheath now a medial fibrous septum now there is a septum now this is known as medial fibrous septum now this septum extends deeply from the medial border of the palmar aponeurosis to the fifth metacarpal so where is the medial border now this is the medial border of your palmar aponeurosis now from this medial border a septum is going downward which is going to attach on this fifth metacarpal now medial to this septum you have a compartment and that compartment consists of hypothenar muscle so here you will have the hypothenar muscles clear then the second thing is about the lateral aspect in the same way laterally the lateral border of palmar aponeurosis also give a septa so medial to thinar muscle this septa splits one leaf 
is going laterally and it is going to attach on the first metacarpal bone which encloses the thinar area while the other leaf continue medially and it is going to attach on the third metacarpal bone and this is helpful to enclose the mid palmar space now here you have to understand this concept that what is happening actually now suppose these are the five metacarpal sections clear these are the five metacarpal sections now when you will see the aponeurosis this is your thick aponeurosis this is known as palmar aponeurosis clear now this is the one thing which you have to understand that in the very initial slide i told you there has to be a space between the palmar aponeurosis and these bones which are having the introsciae and this space is actually not present because it is filled by multiple structures now when you are talking about the septas now there is a septa which is coming from the border going to this fifth this is the fifth metacarpal clear now when you are talking about the lateral side this lateral border is also giving a septa now this septa is going to split in the two part now one part is going to attach on the first now this is the first clear what is that this is your first metacarpal so it is going to attach on the first but it is split so what will happen that its another part will go to the third this is the third so it is 1 2 3 4 5 5 now you have to understand that the lateral border is also giving a deep septa the medial border is also giving the deep septa this septa will attach to the fifth metacarpal this septa is split one will go on the first and another will go on the third some books will not show this part and they are having only this leaf of your lateral septum clear now my dear students this is the important thing to understand that the one leaf goes laterally attached to the first metacarpal and the second leaf will go and attach on the third metacarpal now this third metacarpal leaf is enclosing the space is known as mid palmar space so where is the mid palmar space so the area which will generate here now this area which will generate here between the medial septum and this part of the lateral septum is known as mid palmar space what is that mid palmar space clear so that's why the name of this septum is known as mid palmar septum or it is also known as oblique septum so what you are able to understand first here that when we are talking about the spaces first you should understand the arrangement of the fascia there is a palmar aponeurosis the both borders of the palmar aponeurosis giving the deep extension towards the metacarpals the lateral border is giving a septum which is splitting into the two part the major or the strongest portion is going to the third metacarpal which is known as oblique septum or mid palmar septum and it is also giving a very small slip which is going to the first metacarpal while the medial border is also giving a septum which is known as medial palmar septa now the septum usually passes deeply between the flexor tendons of the index and middle finger and that's why the flexor tendon of the index finger overlie the thenar space so where is the thenar space now the area which is present here is known as thenar space and this is the area which is known as mid palmar space clear so what is the boundary between the thenar and mid palmar space answer is oblique septum or mid palmar septum but my dear students you have to understand this thing that there are four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus so what is happening that the position of this septum is important because all the four tendons are not present here in the palm as you will go ahead the all four tendons are not present in this mid palmar space what is actually the exact position which you have to understand here that this one of the tendon will come here clear so that's why it is 
uh, written here that the flexor tendon of the index finger overlie the thinner space. So what is index finger? This is the index finger. So here you will have the septa which is dividing the tendons of your remaining three finger and this index finger and this is the area where the uh, septa is going to the third metacarpus. Clear? So in this image also you can see the same thing that this is your lateral border. Clear? This is your medial border. Now here you can see that this is the medial septum and this is the lateral septum which is having the splitting here and this lateral septum is going to this third metacarpal and here you have to understand the important thing is when you are drawing the tendons now in the upper part if you will see the tendons there are only three one two three the fourth tendon is here which is uh, now in the lateral side of this oblique septum clear so this is the thing which you have to keep in mind when you are drawing this section that the oblique septum is separating the index finger tendon from the remaining three tendons clear so the lateral to the septum is the lateral compartment the between the hypothenar and thenar compartment you have the central compartment and now there is a one more horizontal deep fascia which covers the metacarpal interosseae muscle and adductor pollicis so how again try to understand it here that you are having this palmar aponeurosis now this is your palmar aponeurosis clear now from the lateral border you are having oblique septum that is on the lateral side and there is a one more septum here that is on the medial side clear this is known as medial palmar septum it is known as lateral palmar septum and there is a one more septa here which is coming from its splitting and this is your one of the leaf of the lateral septa. Now you will realize that there are the spaces. What are the compartment basically? Now this area is known as central compartment. This is known as central compartment. Now lateral to the lateral septum you have thinner compartment. So this is your thinner compartment. Now, on the medial side, this is your hypothenar area, clear? But on the posterior side, what you have? On the posterior side, we have the bones. So these are the metacarpals. Now, when you are drawing this, you have to understand that this septum is going to attach on the third. So this is the third metacarpal. It is going to attach on the fifth. So this is my fifth metacarpal. This is the fourth remaining will come here first and second clear and now what is happening here there is a one more septum now that septum is not vertical but that is horizontal and that septum is present here like this so this is a deep fascia and this deep fascia covering your metacarpals and here you have the interosseae which muscles we have here we have the interosseae muscles between the adjacent bones. So what is written here that the deepest fascia in the palm, deepest in the palm, you have a fascia which covers the metacarpal, interosseae and adductor pollicis. You know that adductor pollicis is arising in the your lateral side from the metacarpal and it is a oblique muscle which is present in the deepest part of your palm. So the adductor pollicis which is present here is also covered by this horizontally placed deep fascia. So here now when you will see this orientation of the fascia, now you have the idea that how the compartments form in the palm, clear? So now what is the arrangement of the structure in the palm? Because we have seen that this area is not hollow. When we removed the all structures between the palmar aponeurosis and your metacarpals we found there is an area but this is theoretically possible practically you have multiple structure in the area between the bone and palmar aponeurosis so what these structures in the lateral compartment you have the thinner muscles in the medial compartment you have hypothenar muscles and in the central compartment you have a large amount of the loose connective tissue and some fat 
and that connective tissue and fat is embedded or pierced by the long flexor tendons, their sheaths, the lumbricals muscle, the superficial palmar arch and the digital nerve and vessels. Clear? So that you can appreciate in this diagram also that this is your central compartment and in this central compartment there is a no space and this area is actually full of the structures like your arches, your nerves, your long tendons and lumbricals. Clear? So then what are the spaces comes out in your mind? Between the flexor tendons and the fascia covering the deep palmar space, there are two potential spaces. So where is the space? Spaces are now below the long flexor tendons. So when you are coming from superficial to deep, first you have to remove the aponeurosis. Below the aponeurosis, you will have the long tendons and below the long tendons, you have a some potential space which is filled with the fat and below the fat we have that horizontal deep fascia and behind that deep fascia what comes is metacarpals and interosseae. So in that area just anterior to the deep fascia behind the long flexor tendons we have the fat filled areas one is in the mid palmar space one is your thinner space. So one will come in the central part of the palm. So the thinner space and mid palmar space are the two potential spaces on the side these spaces are bounded by the fibrous septum which we have seen which are passing from the respective edges of your palmar aponeurosis and between the two spaces there is a strong lateral uh, septum which I have told you that that septum is going to the third metacarpal which is known as oblique septum or the mid palmar septum. So again in this image you have to understand that where is the space? Students, space are present deep to these flexor tendons and superficial to this horizontal deep fascia. So where is the space? Now here you can see this is known as space of your palm. So one space is seen here. What is this space? Mid palmar space. And on this side you have again the same space is here. Now what is this space? this is thinner space. And what is the line of demarcation? So the line of demarcation is this oblique septum and this oblique septum is approaching the third metacarpal. So here you can see this is the oblique septum or the mid palmar septum. Lateral to the septum you have the thinner space. Medial to the septum you have this mid palmar space. Clear? So spaces are formed in the hand due to the arrangement of the fascia which I already told you that there are the lateral border is coming the oblique septum, medial border is giving the medial septum and this oblique septum is going on the third metacarpal, it is going on the fifth metacarpal and there is a horizontal deep fascia and just below the long flexor tendon above the deep fascia there is a space in the center is known as mid palmar space and there is space on the lateral side is thinner space. In case of the effusion, now when these spaces become visible or prominent. So these spaces are visible when there is a collection of the fluid or the pus. So these potential space distend and open up and they are now better defined. Because in a normal person, if you will press on your palm, you will not find any kind of the space. But when there is a pus is formation, when there is a collection of the fluid, what will happen? We have this swellings are there in the hand. These concavity, which is a normal feature of the palm lost and the hand will show some kind of the elevation or the convexity is there. So that is because the pus is collected deep to the long flexor tendons and that is actually the area which are known as spaces. So several such spaces have been described in the palm of the hand but the most prominent spaces which we know is mid palmar space and thinner space. Clear? <clears throat> so the thinner space is deep to the flexor tendon of index finger but it is superficial to the adductor pollicis. Now this is a very commonly asked question in your exam that is the boundary of your thinner space. When you are talking about the space, where is the space, 
Now this is the space. Now this space lies behind these long tendons of your index finger and anterior to this adductor muscle and this is your deep fascia. Clear? So this is the important concept to understand about the position of thinar space. Now when you will talk about the mid palmar space, now this mid palmar space is the space which lies between the introsiae and the deep surface of the long tendons that is remaining long tendons. This diagram also if you will see the deep palmar space, now this is the mid palmar space. Now in this mid palmar space if you will see the boundaries, anteriorly you will have the long flexor tendons and posteriorly you will have all the metacarpals with the interosiae. Clear? So, what are the differences between the mid palmar and thinar space? So, we have seen that when we are talking about the mid palmar space, anterior boundary is formed by flexor tendons of third, fourth, and fifth digit, not the second, that means the index. Why? Because I just told you that the index finger is here. And this index finger is going to form anterior boundary of thinner space. Clear? The second difference is that the second, third, fourth lumbricals are also associated anteriorly with the corresponding tendons. But here you have only the first lumbrical which is related with the index finger. There is a palmar aponeurosis is present anteriorly which is a common finding. Here also you will find palmar aponeurosis anteriorly. Now what is the posterior area? Now posteriorly you will, in both side you will find the metacarpals and between the metacarpals you will have the interosia. But in the thinar space, apart from these metacarpals and the interosia, you are having one more important muscle that is adductor pollicis, which is not a posterior relation of the mid palmar space. And when you will see the sides, you will find that on both the sides, you are having the respective septa and this is a very commonly asked question which septa separates the mid palmar space from the thinar space answer is mid palmar septum or the oblique septum or sometimes it is also known as lateral septum of palm clear so in this image you can appreciate these all findings very well that first you have to draw this palmar aponeurosis the lateral boundary of palmar aponeurosis is giving the oblique septum and this oblique septum is the line of demarcation between your two spaces. So this is your thinar space and this is your mid palmar space, clear? And the most important thing is that you have to keep in mind this is your third metacarpal. So this septum always go on the third metacarpal. And there is a horizontal fascia is there. So this space posteriorly bounded by this deepest fascia and anteriorly the long flexor tendons. This space is also bounded posteriorly by the deep fascia but there is an addition of a muscle and this muscle is your adductor pollicis. Clear? So this, these are the two spaces of the your palm. Now there is a one more space and that is your pulp space. Now the pulp spaces are present on the fingertips and the complete name of this space is pulp space of Whitlow. So the pulp space are on the palmar side of the tips of the finger and thumb. They are not present on this area because here you have the nail bed. So spaces are present only on the palmar aspect and the tip of finger and the thumb they contain a collection of subcutaneous fat and this subcutaneous fat arranged in the tight compartments and these compartments are formed by the fibrous septa and these fibrous septa connects the overlying skin to the periosteum of your phalanges. So what is happening here that suppose this is your phalanges and the phalanges are covered by the skin. So this is your skin, clear? Now there are the septa. Now these septas are connecting the periosteum of the bone with the overlying skin, clear? So the subcutaneous fat is now divided into these compartments 
and these compartments are very tight compartments now what is happening that the terminal branches of the digital arteries are coursing through or passing through these spaces and they are puncturing the septas and the important thing is that here what you are able to understand that this is the artery now the artery is giving the branches now this branch is going like this clear and these branches are puncturing the septas they are passing through the compartments but if you see this part that is the proximal most part of the phalanx it is receiving the artery here and you will find that these proximal arteries are not passing through any compartment or these proximal arteries are not puncturing any septa so this is a very important clinical aspect so here it is written that the not all the arteries which are supplying the epiphysis that means the proximal part of your uh, phalanges are not passing through the compartments so what is the advantage the advantage is applied anatomy for you the collection of the pus in the pulp spaces is known as phalon what is phalon this is again a question infection of the pulp spaces of whitlow is known as phalon and infection of the uh, this pulp space may be occlude the blood vessels why they occlude the, uh, the blood vessels because these are the tight compartments so what will happen the pressure is become very high and because of these high pressure they will compress the blood vessels which are passing through the compartment so it causes the necrosis of the distal part of the bone so what will happen that because of the compression of these arteries the blood supply of this part will hamper and there is a necrosis of these part of the bone but the proximal part of the bone is not showing any necrosis because this artery is not passing through these tightly packed compartments so this is the important question for your exam that why the proximal part of the phalanges escape or does not show the necrosis in case of the phalon answer is because that proximal part arteries are not passing through the compartments which are present in the remaining part of the finger or in the pulp space so the rising tension in the space give rise to the severe throbbing pain and the infection in the pulp space can be drained by the lateral incisions and all the compartment should be open and we have to avoid the damage of tactile tissue if you will put the anterior incisions or if you will see the uh, put the horizontal incisions then you may damage the nerves as well as that there is a loss of tactile sensation so we'll make the incision on the lateral border of your fingers so my dear students at the end of this session of the spaces of the palm what we are able to understand that the palmar spaces basically formed because of the arrangement of the fascia and the structures the fascia arrange in such a way that it divides the palm into the compartments and these compartments are having the contents and behind the contents but in front of the metacarpals and the interosseous muscle there is a space is present which space are generally filled with the connective tissue and the fat but in case of the infection these spaces become more pronounced and that spaces are now visible in the uh, infections which are known as palmar spaces and these are the mid palmar space and the thinar space and you have one uh, one more space which are present on the tip of finger is the pulp space so this is all for the session thank you